Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today is Safer Internet Day, and I'm sure you're wondering what the heck that means. Well, Safer Internet Day is a day that is designed to make sure that everyone knows things in order to keep them safe on the internet. There's even a logo and all sorts of good stuff to celebrate Safer Internet Day. Now, Safer Internet Day has been for a while, but it's probably one of those holidays you didn't even know it existed. But that's okay. You don't have to know about Safer Internet Day to understand that you need to make sure that you are doing things that are keeping you safe on the web. There are all sorts of cyber threats out there, and we'll talk about some of those that you need to avoid. And, of course, things that you can do to make sure that you are staying safe uh, for everything internet bad or internet baddies after you. So let's take it away so we can start talking about how you can stay safe on the internet. Now, before we really launch into things, something I always mention is the fact that more than 99% of cyber attacks rely on human interaction. So that means that under most circumstances, that all it takes is a little education of knowing what cyber threats are out there in order to keep you safe from falling victim to a cyber criminal. So let's move on with some of the biggest scams out there and how you can keep safe. Now, number one, most of your scams are going to come in the form of phishing scams. And phishing scams can happen a, a number of different ways. Number one, you can have your regular text message scam. Um, you can also have email scams and voicemail scams or voice scams any. Ah, what am I trying to say? Boy scams that are designed to trick you out of your precious information. So everyone's familiar with email scams or phishing scams where you get an email that says, hey, we're from XYZ company. We need some information. Obviously, if you give the information out, then criminals can get into your information. Um, all cybercrime currently relies on mainly phishing scams. So you can get a phishing scam in a form of a text that says that you've ordered too much and that they need to refund your money. Now, there's all sorts of phishing scams out there, but most of your cyber threats are working in a way of people or criminals trying to fish information out of you so that you can fall victim to the latest scam that is out there. And it just sucks, doesn't it? You're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that there are so many scams out there, but uh, buyer or internet user beware, there are a ton. Now, some of the new scams that are popped up are as following. So number one, as far as phishing scams, there is the police scam, which is essentially you get a call from a scammer saying that law enforcement is after you and there's a warrant out for your arrest. So of course, to talk down the warrant for your arrest, then criminals will say you can Take care of the outstanding warrant if you give them money over the phone, whether it be Western Union or by gift cards. But anyway, there's always a way out of it that includes money and you giving up some information. You should know, I almost said we all should know, but I think we should. When it comes to law enforcement, if there's truly a warrant out from your uh, for your arrest, whether it be from local PD or the uh, FBI, <laughs> it ain't going to take any money <laughs> to stop that from happening. In fact, if you do try to use money to coerce law enforcement not to take you away in handcuffs, that would be called bribery. So <laughs> if that happens, if someone calls, uh, it's definitely a scam. Uh, but you can also check with law enforcement to make sure that there isn't a warrant out for you. If there happens to be, obviously they're gonna get you. But before you give out money, Make sure you do a little research to make sure that there actually isn't a warrant for you and that the local PD or whoever is going to bust down your door. Another recent cyber scam or computer scam is the Bitcoin scam. 
And if you haven't been living under a rock, you probably know what cyber currency is, but basically it's electronic currency. Now there's a different ways that uh, criminals can get you to get you to fall for some of the cryptocurrency scams. Of course, you'll get a fake email from a company in, encouraging you to convert your real life currency to cryptocurrency and people will fall on that just for the simple fact that uh, cryptocurrency is so popular and people are looking for ways that they can increase their investments and of course their just money in general. Um, but when purchasing cryptocurrency, you definitely need to go with a legitimate company rather than just falling for a scam that comes in the form of an email or even falling for some of the social media experts that you will see online asking you to invest in cryptocurrency. With cryptocurrency, because it's electronic currency, is not something that's easily gained back if you become scammed. So really do your due diligence before you invest with crypto cryptocurrency and make sure you're dealing with a reputable dealer um, when it comes to purchasing cryptocurrency. Just don't think you can go with anybody. Make sure you're working with a company that knows cryptocurrency and if something happens that you can kind of go back to them. But again, with it being electronic currency, if, if you don't take care of your cryptocurrency, it's kind of on you if you lose amounts of electronic, electronic currency. Next on our list, as far as the latest scams that are going on, are the romance scams. And these are kind of tricky because they can work a variety of different ways. You can get a random text message or an email or even a message on social media from someone promising romance. They saw your photo, they fell in love with you, and they want to get to know you. But there are several things that you need to look out for when it comes to romance scams. They can even occur on some of the popular dating sites, even though some of them do a decent job of betting people. There are others that really do an okay job of betting. So the things that you need to look for is number one, maybe they won't talk to you over the phone. Now this could be the case if someone is using a photo that doesn't look or sound like them. And I know that sounds odd, but certain people look a certain way and you maybe get an idea of how they sound. But if a lot of your correspondence is over email or over chat and the person's not willing to meet face to face, it's probably a sure sign that it may be a catfish or a romance scam. Other things that you have to remember with romance scams is like the Kingpin in Daredevil series, the <laughs> romance or catfishers definitely play the long game, meaning that they will definitely try to develop trust uh, with them or you trusting them in order to utilize their scams. They may not come out and ask for money instantly, but at some point the monetary um, conversation will come up and they may try to extort money out of you or they may try to gain your confidence so that they can ask you for money. And the other thing you need to watch out for is perhaps this person online is always having money issues. So. The whole goal is to get your funds. So make sure that you do your due diligence. If you meet someone online, uh, make sure that you meet them face to face and take your time developing a relationship rather than just being the lonely person, which there's a lot of people out there that are. Just take your time and make sure that you're not falling for any romance scam because unfortunately it doesn't necessarily work with a scammy email. A lot of it is just through social media and just other means where People are developing relationships and they can come from anywhere. So just be aware with the people that you meet online and make sure that you're not being scammed. Which brings us to our next scam is social media scams and they're abundant. Social media scams uh, can occur in a number of ways. And I think you've seen this where someone says, oh no, I've been hacked. And that can be true or not true when it comes to social media. Now, the way the hacking works on social media is this, is if someone hacks your social media account, that means that they've commandeered your account because they got your email off of the dark web and they used your credentials to log into your social media account. Once this happens, they've got access to all of your friends and so you will get the email or the message from your friend directing you to an unknown link. Again, this is called phishing. 
So if that's the case that your social media account has been commandeered, it's a simple matter of going in and changing the password to your social media account so that the criminal can't commandeer it and take it over completely where you can't log in and do anything. Now, another method of social media scams comes in the, in the form of someone creating a fake social media account that has perhaps your photos, uh, several posts, and they're able to access your friends on social media. This occurs again because criminals are trying to fish for your friends. So sometimes they will take over your account if they got access to your password. And beware of the takeover because sometimes if criminals change your password, you're locked out of your social media account forever and you're never able to gain access to it. The other method, when someone makes a duplicate of your social media account, you just need to report that to the proper social media authorities if there's such a thing, because you know, most of those sites don't really support you, but you can contact them and let them know that there is a duplicate account and that they need to get rid of it. Our next scam is just regular phone scams. Again, phishing, where you've got all sorts of things that are going on when it comes to calls that come over your smartphone or even your landline. Now, what are some of those scams? Many of you are aware of these, but these are the scams that you can definitely see when it comes to um, online robo scams or just general phone scams. So you've got charity, you've got social media, sweepstakes, sweepstakes IRS, medical care, government, auto warranties, which is the big one. And of course, home repairs where you've got scammers calling you about home repairs. I know. And the thing about some of these robo call scams, some of them will actually appear on social media, you'll have people infiltrate uh, specific groups or just on your social media feed that they're offering services that you may need and you can call them to get help, but it turns out to be a scam. So you really have to be weary about the robocall scams that come through and of course, making sure that these scams don't trick you on social media. So overall, what can you do in order to keep yourself safe from a lot of these scams out there? Well, understand that many online scams occur because a lot of your credentials are floating around on the dark web where cyber criminals can easily find your email and your passwords, which it makes it easy for them to log into your account. So to make sure that you're safe, do the following. Though number one, make sure you visit haveibeenpwned.com, which is a website that allows you to find out if your information has found wound up on the dark web. And look at that, Burton actually bought up a screen of Have I Been Pwned. So what you would do is go to haveibeenpwned.com, which is not spelled at the top the correct way. I'm gonna hit it again to make sure we're there, and we're there. So you would put an email or a phone number in. So we'll put an old integral email that we had on Yahoo years ago. Click on the word pwned, hopefully you can see, and you can click and find out if you've been pwned. Before I click on the email, uh, keep in mind that with Have I Been Pwned, you can check to see if your email or your phone number has been involved in a data breach. Why is that important? Especially with emails and with phone numbers, these large scale data breaches give criminals access to your phone number and your email, which allows them to spam you or allows them to call you to trick you out of your stuff. So going back to our Have I Been Pwned site, um, if I can get to it, there we go. We go and hit Pwned to see if you've been pwned and if you have had a data breach. And as you can see, if this email address was involved in one, then it will let you know when the information was leaked. And the most famous question out of all of this is people always ask, well, Burton, what if I have been breached by I have been pwned? Well, the answer is pretty simple because it's just a matter of going in and changing the password or passwords for that site to make sure that your, your information stays safe and secure and out of the hands of cyber criminal. And I will note before we go to the next method that if you see that your information has been leaked in a large scale data breach, make sure that you change all of your passwords to keep your account safe. Now our next advice or my next advice, I should say mine, because it's me giving out the tips is passphrases. And what the heck are passphrases? Passphrases are the new form of passwords where you just put together two unrelated words to create a nice secure password. 
So if you were to put two, two together, two words together, like yellow chimpanzee or maybe murky person, then those would be uh, example of passphrases that you could use instead of a password. Path, passphrases are secure because it helps you get out of the habit of using information like kids' names, your birth dates and addresses, and other personal information that you're probably already sharing on social media. If you use a passphrase, it's something that you will remember because it's just goofiness that helps stick and it's the more secure method to use. So if you need help with a passphrase, let me see if I can bring this up and it looks like I can. So there's a website called Use a Passphrase where you can quickly find out how to use a passphrase. And I have a lot of tabs open. So I'm trying to close these tabs to show you how to use a passphrase. So give me a second and I will bring up the website Use a Passphrase. Let's look at it. So if you use a passphrase, Go to the website and find out what's a nice secure passphrase to use. So you could use, you know, in most instances, you only need two words. So you could use the Ebu Captivity, uh, or you could use Emo Able, or just mix them around just to get a nice secure passphrase. Now, obviously, you wouldn't want to use the passphrase Limu Ebu because we all know what that goes to. So use something that's not being used. Next is to set up two-factor authentication on your online accounts. Essentially, this is a process where you tell your Facebook or Canva or whatever page you're using on the web that alert me if I'm signing on to a new device. So if you log on to Facebook regularly in your area and then all of a sudden you decide you're gonna log out of state, you will get the two-factor authentication on your smartphone letting you know or confirming that it's you logging in. Now, if a cyber criminal gets access to it, you will also get the alert because it's a new sign-in and the two-factor authentication will just confirm that you're on Mars trying to log into your Facebook account. Now, if you're on Mars and you're doing that, that's great. But if you're not on Mars and you're on planet Earth and you're trying to log into Facebook or whatever account, you know that some criminal or Martian has your information and you don't want to allow them in. Next is password keepers. Doesn't matter if you use last or not last pass, goodness. Yeah, what am I saying? Last pass or your favorite browser to save your password. Make sure that you're storing your passwords in a password keeper. So A, you can keep track of all of those hard to remember passwords and they will log you in. And B, make sure that using, that when you use a password keeper, that you're aware of the threats that are going on on the dark web because most password keepers will pop up and say, hey, you've got some threats and someone knows your password, so you need to change it or you're gonna get hacked. So use a password keeper. Also, if you're using cloud storage, make sure that the accounts for your cloud storage accounts are nice and secure with a passphrase because there is a lot of information that automatically syncs to the cloud. So it doesn't matter if you're using one of these services that are here, if it leaks on or if it copies from your device to the cloud and a criminal gets access to your passwords then definitely all your documents and stuff are gonna be at risk from a criminal. Also, don't forget about the real world. Criminals steal devices and make sure yours is password protected so that if your device is stolen, that you can locate your device and make sure that you turn on find my device. So if it's um, lost or stolen or lost again, like I did in Chicago back last year, then you can find your device quickly and easily. Um, and then finally, the whole antivirus uh, argument. Antivirus, yes, should you use it? No, you really shouldn't because the Windows Users have Windows Defender that's built in. And for Macintosh users, the whole operating system is essentially an antivirus program. So you don't need all that extra stuff on your computer when it comes to virus software. You do need virus software, but in most instances, it's already built in with Windows Defender and with Mac. So you don't need all that extra stuff on your computer, making it run slow and paying money you don't need to. So with that said, if you have comments and questions about today and Safer Internet Day, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you to find out 
what stuff you're doing to keep or to make safer internet day every day and if you like this video be sure to subscribe and believe it or not i pointed in the right direction um it like ring the bell if you're watching this on facebook but share it with your friends like it love it do whatever as long as it's positive toward this video and um that way you can get the latest tech tips and tricks that are gonna help you stay safe so I love technology. I've read all the manuals and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching.